It's a week full of important economic data, and Frank Holmes joins us now from Vancouver. Frank, good to see you. It's great to see you, too. Thanks, Frank. And I know you're at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference this week, and you were saying how uh, sentiment is up. The sentiment was huge, 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 huge. And also, all the Vancouverites were spectacularly happy that the Seattle Seahawks are going to the Super Bowl. And uh, at, during the afternoon on Sunday, they had a huge TV screen, so people ran from listening to presentations to watch the football game. Now, Frank, I'd like to start with the major news item that came out last week, since I didn't get a chance to get your reaction, to the Swiss National Bank abandoning their currency peg and what it has done for gold. Frank, what do you make of the news? Well, this caught everyone off guard. Usually these events take place over a weekend when, when it's a surprise. Uh, it was done the middle of the week. It wiped out many uh, uh, money managers. So this creates trepidation. This creates um, a lack of confidence. And it seems that central bankers, everyone's out for themselves now. And that mean, what does that do? Gold goes up. Gold is safe money. It's always been safe money. And so this potential for a big currency unraveling, what is Ukraine going to happen with Russia going in there? That's sort of another type of political uncertainty. Then you have the Swiss, what they're worried about, the Europeans printing away money and rates there are at zero. Uh, I think this creates this lack of confidence. Now, Frank, don't you think the Swiss knew that this news would shake the marketplace? I think that a lot of times they're all academics. They're oblivious. They, they're oblivious to the capital markets. They're oblivious to the social interactions that take place. All right, let's get to our opportunities and threats portion of the show. Let's start with opportunities. And we have the big ECB meeting this Thursday, Frank, where everyone is really expecting them to announce a new round of quantitative easing. What do you make of it, Frank? What can we expect? Well, I think that the money, a lot of um, people are thinking that uh, s the Swiss know that the Europeans are going to start printing the money. But it's a bit of a joke that they need, you know, a policy for a policy for a policy to make a decision to go ahead to do quantitative easing. They've been talking about it for so long and still nothing's been done. Uh, and so will it happen? Well, that's a big news if it does happen, because we also have prior to them, I think it's as significant as the Bank of Japan. So this is an action pack week. We have Wednesday Bank of Japan, Thursday, we have the ECB, uh, then we have flash PMIs on Friday, and then we have the Greek elections on Sunday. In other opportunities, Frank, banks on the back of this SNB news have re-evaluated their positions on gold. Many are calling for higher forecasts for the metal this year. Frank, do you think that this gold rally we're seeing is sustainable? Yes, I do. But for all your listeners, remember, this is a seasonal period that gold has a great rally as we go into the Chinese New Year. Uh, and I think that that's something that has to be put in context. Gold is not overbought for the past 60 trading days based on our quantitative models, but stocks are. The stocks are up over 20 trading days, two standard deviations over uh, three months are up, but one standard deviation. So they've had a great move. Why? Because gold was basically flat in 2014, but the stocks were off dramatically. So you've got this wonderful comeback. We've seen positive flows into the gold funds ever since gold went above the 50-day moving average. Average. All right, looking at threats now, Frank, despite the uncertainty, many analysts are still expecting a U.S. rate hike this year. Do you agree? No, nah, well, I think it may make the, the dollar strong. But wouldn't it be interesting if the dollar was strong and so was gold? If there's so much turmoil, so much instability on the weekend, I published these charts and I know you guys have a wonderful site for that. But gold broke out in euros, gold broke out in Japanese yen, gold broke out in the rand terms. So those stocks, anything that's a gold producer in South Africa has had a wonderful bigger surge than you've experienced here in Canada. All right. We'll end now with your touchdown pass of the week. So much to choose from, Frank. What will it be? For this week, I think it's going to be all eyes on the ECB, uh, but more important will be the flash PMI, because if it's negative, the, the Chinese will respond immediately, unlike the Europeans, which have been talking for months now. Um, they'll respond with another form of stimulus. Now, what they did for copper last week was a huge infrastructure program and funding for expanding their, their uh, electrical systems. So I think that th these are the important parts to follow. There's still the 800-pound gorilla for for the commodity world. Absolutely. And thanks so much for watching this edition of Gold Game Film with Frank Holmes. We'll see Frank next week and we'll see you tomorrow.